How's it going everybody? My name is Chumushku. A year ago today I uploaded my first video onto my YouTube channel which was my 3DS collection at the time and I thought it'd be a little fun thing to do uploading another video of an updated 3DS collection on the same day a year later. So let's just get to it. So this time around I did organize all the games by the type of game they are in the category so hopefully this time it's a little bit more organized. If you did want to check out my first video I will leave a link down below so that you can check that out as well. But let's just get started. So first we have Super Mario 3D Land. This game is Mario's first 3D game on a handheld console and it's actually a pretty fun game. I'm actually replaying it right now and it's somewhat easy but later on levels do get a little challenging but it is a really good game and it might be, at least in my opinion, a must own for the 3DS if you do like platforming. The 3D in this game, though, is very strong. Um, I'm assuming it's just because this game came out near the 3DS's release, and 3D was a new thing, and they really wanted to emphasize it. But you can just play without the 3D on, so it's not too big of a deal. Next game we have is Super Mario Brothers, New Super Mario Brothers 2. This game is pretty much like any other Mario game making your way through the Mushroom Kingdom and everything, but the emphasis on this game is coins. And you go through levels and you just want to grab coins and try to get as many coins overall as you can. It's a little gimmicky, but it's still a fun Mario game if you do like Mario or if you do like platformers. Next we have Mario & Luigi Dream Team. So this game was actually my first Mario & Luigi game that I played. And I like it, but I can never really get too far into the game. It starts out with lots of tutorials, which can be annoying at first. But it's just so slow-paced that it gets a little dull after playing it for a while. I did play it again recently, and I did get a little further. I really do want to go back eventually and try to finish this game. But only time will tell for that. The next game we have is Mario & Luigi Paper Jam. This game got a lot of flack when this game was announced and released because people thought Paper Mario in the game was just another gimmick, which it was. But I really do enjoy this game a lot more than pretty much any of the other Mario and Luigi games I've played. So the game works with the crossover between both kingdoms, and I actually got really far into this game. Almost beat the game, but there's some sort of glitch in the game or something where I can't go past this part that you need to go past. There's like a whole bunch of like little... I want to say mini games, but not really mini games where you have to rescue toad, find and rescue these toads that are hidden around the area. And I found all the toads, but it still says there's more toads left to find. And after I checked online for like guides and stuff like that, it still is saying there's toads that there are no toads where it says they are in my game. So I never probably will finish this game because I really don't want to start a new save file since I put so much time into this game. But it is a really, really fun game, and I do recommend it, and I really do, I did enjoy it. I know it was a controversial game. The next game we have is Mar and Luigi Superstar Saga and Bowser's Minions. I actually just got this game today. It just released today as well. Oh, no, it re released over the weekend, actually. I didn't mean today. And, um... I haven't played it yet, but I'm looking forward to playing this as well. The next we have Paper Mario Sticker Star. Now this game is another game that's very controversial because they take the gimmick of stickers and you pretty much battle with stickers and everything's sticker wise. You have to have certain stickers to move on and it's non-linear. And one of the biggest problems is there could be times you actually run out of stickers or get lost because you don't have the um, item you need to move on. Um, I try playing this game, but I'm on the side where I don't think this game is really that good. If you did want to pick this up and try it, you can find this really, really cheap, new, and used because it wasn't too popular with gamers. Next, we have Mario Kart 7. This game is fun. It's Mario Kart. I mean, there's nothing really to say about it. It's Mario Kart on the handheld but in a more 3D atmosphere than Mario Kart DS was, of course, since you have the C-pad. It's fun if you like Mario Kart on the go or if you only have a 3DS and you can get a Wii U, but um, 
I don't really have anything special to say about that. Next we have Super Mario Th Maker 3 Super Mario Maker 3DS. This game is pretty much like the Wii U version except there's no internet access to really share your own um, levels and download other people's. It's all preset in there and there's some that you can get but it's pretty much just a watered down port of the Wii U version. Um, the Wii U version is the superior version if you were to pick up one of the or the other and you have a Wii U I'd recommend the Wii U version but this game does suffice because it does have its own little I want to say story mode but it's not really a story where you just go around the worlds and you beat these levels that are already made and everything and they're actually quite challenging uh, and then there's like a goal if you do a specific thing in the level you pretty much beat the level and it has replayability because if you want to go try to 100% everything. It's could take time. Next we have Mario Party Island Tour. This game is Mario Party but with another gimmick pretty much. Mario Party on the consoles have been not the best lately with the mechanics of the cars and all that stuff. This game is really really linear to pretty much the point where it takes the party out of it and you just go from one point to the other and the first person really get there wins. There are some challenges, but it's not the best Mario Party game out there. Um, but the mini games aren't that bad, so that's a plus for that as well. Next we have Mario Party Stick Star Rush. Now this game is goes the other direction from Island Tour. In this game, everybody moves mostly at the same time. And when I first got this game, I actually didn't like this game at all. I thought it was going to be a bad game. But I actually put a lot of hours in this game, and I'm actually really enjoying this game. There's different modes. There's modes where you play the party, and you play as toads, and you make your way around battling the bosses. And it can be a little frustrating at times because everyone does move. So if you have a strategic plan to go and try to get an ally or try to go get extra coins, and another player, another player or the computer reaches the boss, everybody battles the boss. So... It can be annoying at times in that sense, but once you put that aside and try the other modes as well, this is actually be a really fun game. Next we have Mario Golf World Tour. I actually still haven't played this game yet, so I don't really have anything to say for that. Mario Tennis Open. This is Mario and tennis, of course. I mean, you play it, you go around playing tennis, it's nothing too, too special. It's fun little bursts of it. And the final Mario game I have is Mario Sports Superstars. This game is another game that got flack when it was announced because it doesn't have like all the fun games and I guess that people wanted from the past. And tennis is in there even though we already have a tennis game. But um, when I first got this game, I actually played a fair amount of it. We have You have horseback, horseback riding, soccer, Baseball, golf, and tennis. And they're all actually pretty fun, except for baseball. For some reason, I cannot figure out the baseball, but that's just me. And then the tennis is fun as well, but as I said, there's already Mario Tennis open, and it's just the same exact um, gameplay as Mario Tennis open. Soccer is all right. Um, it's just so much going on sometimes, and there's like one little thing can happen, and the whole game can get ruined from that sense. Horseback riding isn't that bad, but it's mostly button pressure mashing. And golf is just my least favorite, I want to say, but I still enjoy it. It's just pretty much trying to not hit the ball too hard like other golf games. But um, one thing with this game, though, is it didn't sell that much, I don't think, or at least for me. Whenever I go on, try to play online, I can't find anybody. So that's just me with this at least, and I don't know. Um, I'm going to try it again eventually. We have Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. This game is pretty similar to the GameCube version, except they take the whole whole of a game and s separate it to like little different missions. I didn't play too, too much of this game, but what I did play was pretty fun, and it's on my backlog to go back and try to play. Next, we have Pokemon Art Academy. So, I got this game for Christmas, actually, and I thought it would be fun to be able to draw Pokemon, and it is. 
but it's one of those games I've actually only played like twice. It's fun being able to draw the Pokemon, but it's not too in depth. I don't know, maybe they did update it since then, but I haven't played it since I got this game, so I don't really know exactly how the game is, but it's still a fun game, and I like Pokemon, so I wanted to make sure to add it to my collection. We have Pokemon Rumble Blast. This game is pretty much like the games, um, the Rumble games in the past. You just get these little creatures, and you like go around just tackling them and attacking them with um, the A and B button. You have to rescue some. Some can add to your party and stuff like that. It's fun, but it's not too in-depth. I never beat this game, but I got pretty close to the end of it. But I just got so bored with it, I was just like, I can't play this anymore. Next, we have Pokemon Rumble World. Now, this game originally was a downloadable title on 3DS with microtransactions, and then they released the physical version of it and the physical version of it takes away the microtransactions so you have enough coins I guess to be able to get everything automatically in the game as far as I can remember I don't remember 100% for sure um, when this game first came out I actually played a lot of it but since then I haven't really played it and I actually never played this version I got this at GameStop because I really wanted the game to add to my collection and it was starting to become scarce to find um, so I was able to get this but it's just another one of those spin-off Pokemon games, really. Next, we have Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Gates to Infinity. Now, this game I got... Actually, this first game I got after I got my 3DS. It's really fun. The story isn't too in-depth, but it's also a kid's game. So, it doesn't really need to go in-depth. And it can be fun exploring the dungeons, playing the Pokemon. But the final boss, I felt, was so repetitive with its battling and it's just not the best ending to the game in my opinion. But if you still find this game and you do like the Mystery Dungeon series, I do recommend this one. Next we have Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. Now this game actually is liked more, I guess, than the other one. However, I like the other one more than this one. I just find the controls on this one such a pain to maneuver around it's more like the l buttons instead of just the other buttons and you have to reach your hands up and play it um to hit them i mean to hit them to play it and um i don't really have anything to say because i haven't really played it too much i did well, i always did want to go back and play this game but it also has mega evolutions in it and a whole bunch more pokemon than the first one did so i can see why it's probably liked for that reason so we have here Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. This is Pokemon's first leap into the 3D gaming world. And the game isn't that bad. Um, I never finish these games because I always get to the same gym and I'm struggling for some reason with this gym every single time. I don't remember what the city's called or anything, which gym it is. It's like, I'd say, the middle of the game. And I even tried using distribution Pokemon to do it, but I just can't do it. I don't know why. It's just, it's me. But um, because of that, I never really got too much into it. And for some reason, I don't know, I don't really like the 3D Pokemon games. I prefer the 2.5D, um, but that's just me as well. And I don't know, this game feels so different than the other ones. I think it's mostly because... You know, this is, as I said, their first leap into 3D games. And I feel like, you know, in the future ones, they were able to fix the little kinks with it and make the games even better. All right, so next we have another duel. We have Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. These games are obviously Gen 3 remakes of Ruby and Sapphire. And this game is actually, these games are really well polished. They take the Hoenn region and expand it and are able to make it look nice and honestly, in my opinion, fix the little problems with X and Y had. I don't know, they just tuned up a little bit more better. The bottom screens utilize better. I love the mechanics where Pokemon will pop up on the bottom and you can sneak around and try to get rare Pokemon or Pokemon that have different movesets for its level or whatever it is. Um, I really do want to go back because I got really far in... Um, Ruby, that's the first one I got, but I never did it, never beat it, and then Alpha Sapphire started, but I always get so many games that it's like my backlog's huge, and like I get tired of games, so I start a new one, or I want to try a new one, 
and I never go back to the first one. So hopefully one day I will go back to them. And finally for Pokemon games, we have Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. So Pokemon Sun's actually still in plastic, I just realized I never opened it. Um, Pokemon Sun and Moon are decent good games. They take a lot of differences from other Pokemon games and start with this new region and everything's different. There's no more gyms, it's more trials where you have to do a task in either a time frame or or something and there's a whole bunch of new Pokemon. There's a day and night system where Moon plays 12 hours ahead of your 3DS clock and Sun plays your 3DS clock. It's a really, really fun game and I played this game right when I first got it and I got to the Elite Four and I couldn't beat the Elite Four. I don't know, this is starting to become a trend with Pokemon games. And, you know, I do this, I, you know, I save after I beat up every trainer, get to the last one, and I'm either out of potions or out of super potions or revive or something like that, or just can't beat it. And then I just get frustrated. I'm like, all right, whatever, I'll try again later. Recently, I actually did restart this game. So it's still in the beginning of it now. I want to try redoing it again fully, I'm trying to do it. But one of the downsides to this game, I feel like the rivals are such a pain. Um, How, I think, Howie, I think his name is. He's so annoying. This game is extremely story driven more than other Pokemon games. And there'll be times where like the story breaks your flow of the game. But overall, it's a really good polished game for the Pokemon. And I'm really excited to see what the next Pokemon game will be. Well, we already know it's going to be Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. But um, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty much like Sun and Moon mechanic wise. But I'm excited to see what the next game will how the next games will be. Um, Ultra Sun Ultra Moon will be the last on the 3DS. I think after that they're moving over to the Switch. But still, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. So next we have Fire Emblem Awakening. Now this game was my first Fire Emblem game that I played. But I wasn't really a fan of it. I don't know why. It just seems like, I don't know, it felt harder. It didn't feel like it was really able to play through it. But... That's just my opinion with it. It also felt unorganized too, because like you'll be battling and then all these other things pop up and you're like, what am I doing? In the I'm top of the map and everything. Next we have Fire Emblem Conquest and Fire Emblem Birthrights. I really did enjoy Fire Emblem Conquest. I actually beat this game and the story is amazing. These games both kind of coincide with each other. Where on this one you're on one team and this one you're on the other, and like you're pretty much battling each other. There is DLC of an of the third game that only can get digitally, but these games are really, really fun, and I really want to play Birthright soon because I enjoyed Conquest so much. And the story is just really good, and it's more, I want to say more easier player for the players, but I don't know. Maybe I'm not too good at Fire Emblem because I never really played too much of the series. Next, we have Kirby Triple Deluxe and Kirby Planet Robobot. These games are amazing. Kirby Triple Deluxe is Kirby's really first into the 3DS. We have Kirby 3D, if you take the first letters of each one, and it's 2.5D, and they really did a really good job of this game, and it's really fun, it's really charming, and you can go back and collect everything for replayability. And then playing a Robobot takes that and actually polishes to the next level, where it's more fluid, it's more um, precise with everything you do. And this one you play, you have like this mech mechanic, mechanicism where you um, once in a while can use this mech and like the abilities of Kirby go to the mech and it helps you go around everything. One thing I do like about this game more than that game is the collectibles are much easier, I feel like, to get. In Kirby Triple Deluxe they have um, medals and the medals are like randomly awarded to you. So there's times where you might not get a certain medal that you need and then there's times where like tons of other ones you need don't need with this one it changes changes a little bit where some of them you only can get a certain course and i feel like this i feel the stickers in this one are so much easier to get than that one i beat this game i'm i was close to the end on this one i ended up stopped playing it but um i was in high much percentage of collectibles on this one and that one and i'm excited to see where kirby goes from here i know there's a 3ds kirby coming out the battle game and then we have a kirby game releasing Next spring, I think, on the Switch. So that'll be exciting. Next, we have Codename Steam. Now, Codename Steam was a new IP from Nintendo that released, and it got mixed feelings because it's just how the game is. 
Some people didn't really like it. It's a turn-based tactical game, but it was just really... I could use some more polishing, but I enjoyed it. This is another game I actually wanted to always go back and play. It's kind of sad that the game didn't really get too much um, praise, or at least enough for a sequel. This game supposedly takes place like very American, where like Abraham Lincoln is a, um, a character on your team. I think... Who else was it? I think I want to say Mark Throw, but I'm not too sure. Well, not Mark Throw, you know, I'm Henry Throw. But um, I would love to see Codename Steam 2 on the Switch. Two games I haven't really played are Dragon Quest Fragments of the Forgotten Past and Fra Dragon Quest Journey of the Cursed King. Now, this game I did start playing, but I had to stop and I never really, I never got back to it. Um, that's what I get, though, for starting a game late at night when I should be going to bed because I have work. I think I had work the next day, and I just never went to it from there. Um, these are two more games I really want to play, which I'll get to eventually as well. Maybe next year's video, of the update video, I will um, have something to say about those. The next games on our list, we have Metroid Samus Returns and Metroid Federation Force, Prime Federation Force. I haven't played this game yet. Um, this game got a lot of hate when it was announced. But um, I still want to try it out and see um, how it really came out to be. This game is actually really cheap now. It's on clearance now. If you did want to try picking it up, I'd suggest looking for it because it's on its way out. And I don't think it's going to be around too much longer just because of how negative the game was perceived. I don't see it staying around too, too longer. Metroid Samus Returns is a remake of the second Metroid game. And this is actually the first Metroid game we got on... Mainline Metroid game we got on 3DS. Um, I played this game when I first got it. I played a few hours into it. Um, it's just an explorer game where you like... You're, you have to go explore everything on your own. The game gives you like little tips or little hints and it's a lot of backtracking. And this game was really, really fun. It's just I never got to finishing it yet. Um, it's one of those games where like, I need to be in the zone, in the mood to play. So that might be why, but I'm going to go back to it eventually. The next game we have is Lego City Undercover The Chase Begins. Now... This game, probably be thought, like, this game's for kids. Like, why you have this game in your collection and why are you playing it? I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was really, really fun. I actually went through and beat this game. Um, yes, it's very cheesy. Yes, it's very kid-driven. It's very easy, too, at times. But I thought it was fun. It's like Grand Theft Auto version of Lego. And um, I really did enjoy it. I really did. And I really did like it. I thought it was really fun. Um... I do recommend it, honestly. I know it might sound weird, but I do recommend it. This game also has a Wii U and Switch version of it. It's Metro. It's Lego City Undercover. I think it's just Lego City Undercover. It's on the PS4, I think Xbox One. I don't know about PC. The Switch. The Wii U had its own different uh, mechanics with it, with the gamepad. And it, this, it was a Wii U exclusive at one point. But I do recommend picking up either this one or the other one. This one's really cheap now as well so next we have two little game cases i got um, i got these from club nintendo a long time ago there's even some games in it actually it comes with um different papers inside there's like three papers i think with three different um, case designs you can choose it came from club nintendo of course as i said and it's a shame club nintendo shut down but it's a shame that these were club nintendo exclusives because these are amazing game cases i like this one much more than one i got when i first got my 3ds it was like a really cheap plastic one this game this one is so solid and durable like if you feel it it's like heavy and it's like thick enough to actually feel the game case and know your games are protected and it, everything fits in perfectly um it's, as i said it's a shame that i don't think they're going to be around anymore since club nintendo ended but it's a really nice game case if you were looking for a game case. I really don't need one because I don't really take my 3DS with me on the go. But just a little recommendation for anyone curious on that fact. All right. We are about halfway down with the collection, so let's just move on to the next part. So next we have 
The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds. Now this game was my first Zelda game that I ever played, and I got it actually digitally with um, one of my 3DSs that I got at the time. This game, I think, is a remake of the second Zelda game, but there's new mechanics in it as well, the, of the, um, I want to call it painting, where you can merge into the walls and it's like a whole new aspect of the game where like you have to go through the wall to maneuver around some levels and it's also open um, dungeon where you can choose the order of dungeons you want to go to and beat the very end to get to the very end of the game and then beat the final boss this game is really good i do recommend this game for anyone who either wants to get into zelda or like zelda if you haven't played it yet um it's just really good. Like, I'm just in shock of how good it was. Because, as I said, it was my first Zelda game that I played. Next, we have The Legend of Zelda, The Ocarina of Time 3D. I haven't played this game yet. Um, I'm not going to lie. I kind of not sure if I really want to open this now since it's so old and there's a select version of it. But I uh, probably will because I don't think that adds any value to it. Um, but it's another game I need to play. I never played The Ocarina of Time, the original one. Because, as I said, The Link Between Worlds was my first Zelda game I played. So, I have a lot of Zelda to catch up on. Next, we have The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D. Now, this game is an interesting Zelda game. Um, so, pretty much in this game, you have three days to, um, I think it's save the world, or else the moon will crash into it. But, you know, you can rewind and everything, but it's one of those games you have to really pay attention to. And it's just something I've never really picked up on too too much i played the game a few times i need to go back and play it again and finally for zelda we have the legend of zelda triforce heroes this game i actually enjoy this game a lot it's more of like a puzzle game where you go around and you can either play with other people locally or online or actually you could play single player and just control each of them individually so it's pretty much puzzles where you have to Maneuver, around, maneuver your way around the level to finish the puzzle and get to the end. Um, I don't think this game was perceived very well, but I actually enjoy this game a lot. I think it's really, really fun, and I do recommend it to anybody curious about that. So next we have Sonic Lost World. It has been so long since I played this game, and I only played little bits of it. That I don't even remember that game that much. I remember that seeing gameplay of the Wii U one when... The Wii U was still in its life cycle. But um, I really don't remember this game too much. I feel like it's an okay game on the 3DS. But as I said, I don't remember. So I don't really want to say anything else. Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal. So this game is okay. Um, it's better. I personally think it's better than the Wii U version of it. Even though I never played the Wii U version. It's a game I wanted to get, but I never did get it. And by the time I was ready to get it, they were all sold out. And it was all already on clearance and everything. So this game, pretty much, you maneuver your way through the level. Um, you can use character, different characters. And, like, there's collectibles in each level. You want to collect... They're in the game. Like, they want you to collect everything. They want you to finish the gate, finish the level within a certain amount of time. It's okay. Um, I first wanted to pick a Fire and Ice... But I never did because then I remembered like this game was just okay and I didn't really want to go and pick up Fire and Ice just because of that. If you're a Sonic fan, I guess it's good to play, but I wouldn't go on my way to play it. Next we have Star Fox 64 3D, a remake of the first Star Fox game. I got this game digitally for free actually when I first got my 3DS because Club Nintendo had a thing where if you buy a certain game, one of one of like four games from that and register a 3DS system, you get this or another game for free. And I didn't know about this and I was really surprised. And um, so pretty much it's a 3D remake of the first Sonic, the Star Fo first Star Fox game. And I don't know, it's okay. I never really been too much of a Star Fox fan. In fact, this was the first time I played a Star Fox game. So I don't really have an opinion on this just because of those matters. I didn't really know what to expect. And um, I've only played this in Star Fox Zero. Next we have Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D. So this game is kind of like a port of the Wii version. And I have both of them. And this game is actually really fun and the t controls are really tight. Um, I had a blast playing this. And if you ever do want to pick this up for the 3ds i do recommend it the one thing i like about donkey kong games are they're really really tight controls and they're really fun 
And most of the time, if you mess up, it's you messing up, not the game messing up. I've only played this game on the 3DS, the Wii, the Wii version, and Tropical Freeze, which is amazing. But since recently, when I got my NES Classic, I actually um, tried. Pl I'm playing Donkey Kong Country on that um, right now, and that game's amazing as well. Donkey Kong is a really good franchise. They do a really good job with those games. Next, we have Epic Mickey, Mickey Power Revolution. This game I just picked up because I wanted something that was like goofy and not like super, super serious and everything. So I picked this one up. The game's okay. It's been years since I played this game. In fact, I think it's been a good three or four years. So I don't remember it too much. I remember the gamepad use is very limited. There's a map on it. And then sometimes you have to draw Mickey's ears on it to get through somewhere. But the game's just all right. Next we have Yoshi's Woolly World, oh sorry, Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World. Now this game is pretty much a 3DS port of the Wii U version, which is a really fun game. It, both these games are really cute, really, really adorable. Um, this summer, actually, past June, I actually was replaying the Wii U version because I never really got too far into it. And I actually got close to the end before I just stopped because I got my Switch and... It's either my Switch or my Wii U that can be plugged into my TV at a time since I have other my PS4 hooked up to it as well. Um, this game, pretty much the same of that with the addition of Poochie more often. And it comes with really cute amiibos. It comes with the Poochie amiibo. Well, it doesn't come with it, but it has it available from the game. But it's really cute and really charming. This game is pretty much the Yoshi game, in my opinion, to pick up if you were looking for a Yoshi game. Um, I'm playing Yoshi's Island on the NES Classic as well. And that game is actually pretty solid as well. Um, it's better than Yoshi's, um, Yoshi's Island on the 3DS, but this game is better than both of those combined. And if you're looking for one of those games, I do recommend Yoshi, Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World. The next game on the list is Sonic All-Star Racing Transformed. Now this game released on a lot of different consoles. The Wii U has one, I think the PS3 has one, and there's a 3DS version of this. This game is actually really, really solid, and the game actually changes as you play it. And I would actually put this up against Mario Kart to see which one's better, because this game has its own positives to it. Mario Kart has its own positives to it as well. So in this game, each level is a little different. Some levels you have to like hover through hoops and get to first place, and then there's racing ones where... Um, the first level, you pretty much race in the car, and then you go in the, the next lap around, you go in the sky and on boat. And finally, there's like levels where you have to actually go make it through a hoop before time runs out to add more time to it. And this game is really solid. This game is really, really fun. And this is a game I actually wanted to pick up on another system, either the PS3 or Wii U at one point. But I feel like now the online base to it is so dead that it's not worth it. But really good. And I feel like the 3DS version might not be the best of the three, but it's still pretty good. Just because of the controls, I think that's why it might not be the best. Next, we have Super Smash Brothers for the 3DS. Um, I'm not really a huge Smash fan. I know. I know it's surprising. I know everyone loves Smash and everything. But um, it's pretty much Super Smash Brothers on the 3DS. There's little different things you can do with it, but... Just nothing really special to say about it. Next, we have Puzzles and Dragons Z and Puzzles and Dragons Super Mario Edition. So Puzzles and Dragons is, I think to my knowledge, like Candy Crush kind of, where you have to like match things around and do stuff. And then they added, and you have to battle, but you have to battle like dragons as you do it. And they added Mario to this. So these are two separate games. I tried playing this actually... Um, few times but I never really could get into it so it depends on if you like puzzle games and if you like those kind of games really to your liking so next we have cave story 3ds this game has not even in the case this game um has two different versions to it there's the physical version and then there's the eShop version um, the Switch does have its own version of this as well. The physical version is a little bit different than the eShop version, and the physical version is somewhat hard to find and rare. 
I remember the day I found this, I was on Reddit and I just po they posted it on the subreddit that it was um, up on GameStop and I jumped right on it and grabbed it. This game is really fun. It's really different, but it's really fun. I actually have this game as well on the Switch and I've been playing it more on the Switch than the 3DS version lately. But um, it's really, really fun, and I really did want. I really do want to eventually get a full set for this game, full collection for this game with the manual, not the manual, the case and everything, since it's in this little GameStop case. But I'll have to see about that. But um, if you were looking for that and you have a Switch, I'd recommend getting on the Switch. Next, we have Chibu Robo Ziplash. So this game is all right. Unfortunately, this was Chibu Robo's last stand for itself in a series um and i don't know how it went from here because i don't know how this sold but the only problem with this is it's just not that well designed the, and the worst part is the levels instead of moving from level one to level two you have to roll a, um spin a thing to see what level you're going to next and it's just a pain um if you're into that kind of stuff if you're into chiba robo i'd say pick it up but I think the better Chibi Robo game for the 3DS is the eShop one, which I never played the eShop one, but I played the demo for it. And in that one, you just like take pictures from your real world off your 3DS and it goes around from there. I think that might be a better one than this one. It's not the best. And you can find that game really, really cheap now, even the bundle, Amiibo bundle. Next, we have Professor Layden and the Miracle Mask. It has been a really a while since I played this game, but when I first got this game, I played a lot of it. It's pretty much puzzles and being a detective and everything, and it's really fun. I do suggest trying out the series if you're into that kind of stuff. So next games we have is Bravely Default and Bravely Second. I haven't played either of these games yet, so I don't really have anything to say. Bravely Default, I tried the demo for, and I thought it was fun years ago. So I picked that one up, and I guess I just picked this one up too. I don't really know why, but um, I'll get to playing them eventually. Next, we have The Legend of Korra, A New Error Begins. This game pretty much is Fire Emblem with a Legend of Korra skin on it. It's not that bad, but it's not the best game. You can find this pretty cheap now. Um, if you did want to play a Legend of Korra game, the consoles, the home consoles have it, all the PS3 and the PS4, Xbox stuff has a different game where it's like a 3D world when you go around battling people. And it's more fun than this. This is, as I said, just Fire Emblem. Um, Legend of Korra skin. If you can see on the back of here, it just shows a little bit of this. What I mean, it's just pretty much that. It's not that bad. I I got entertainment from it, but it's not the best game. Next, we have Cut the Rope Triple Threat. So I picked this up because I thought it'd be funny to play this on the 3DS instead of the phone, instead of my cell phone. Because at one point, I did play Cut the Rope on my phone. I don't really have anything to say about this because it's just. It's literally just the first three Cut the Rope games on the 3DS. There's no extra gimmick. You can use the bottom screen, a touchpad, and the stylus, but that's really it. It's not the best, but it's not that bad. If you like Cut the Rope, I mean, that's good. Next, we have Professor Layden and the Azron Legacy. I actually haven't played this game yet, so I don't really have anything to say of that as well. Xenoblade Chronicles 3D. Now this game is hard to find now because I guess it went out of print. Um, and it's only for the new 3DS. So if you have an original 3DS or a new or a 3DS XL, you can't play it on here. But this game is pretty fun. Um, there are two other Xenoblade games. There's one on the Wii, which is, I guess, rare now. The Wii U has its own and the Switch is getting one. But um, this game is not that bad. I only played like 20 minutes of it. But... Um, because then I got frustrated. I fell off a bridge and I've landed in the water and I got frustrated with having to swim back and I just haven't played it since. But um, it's fun and something I pick up. The battle mechanics are actually very, fairly different in this game than other RPGs that I played. Next we have Ultimate, Ultimate 3, NES Remix. Now I love the concept of taking old games like this game does and changing them around a little bit with different levels. This game has... Some original Mar the original Nintendo classic games where you have to do a different twist and everything. Like maybe for Kirby, you have to battle the boss with the booze coming after you, or like little things like in all the different games in here. And this game is really really fun. And I really do hope Nintendo carries out with this. Maybe 
do Ultimate SNES Remix on the Switch or something like that because this game is such a good concept. I love it. Enjoy so much ex and so much gameplay, so much replayability to beat your high score or your time or something like that. And it's really, really fun. Next, we have Yoshi's New Island. So Yoshi's New Island was a Yoshi Island game on the 3DS. And it's not really the best. Levels are really easy from what I remember. The style of the game the art isn't that appealing honestly but now that i'm playing the other one on the snes i can see you know it's just how the games are the pastel the pastel coloring for it and everything isn't the best look for it and the music is kind of annoying it's like you're in a preschool and it's just a whole bunch of kids playing music at one and mario crying is another thing but if you like platformers or yoshi's island games i mean this game it's fun. Um, I mean, I beat the game. I didn't really want to go back and try to collect everything. And the final boss wasn't that interesting. But that's just me. Next, we have Steel Driver 3DS. Diver 3DS. I got this game when I first got my 3DS because it was like a dollar. I haven't played it. Okay, don't kill me, guys. Especially if you've seen my first video. But Animal Crossing New Leaf. And the reason I don't kill me is because in my first um, 3DS collection video that I did, I mentioned how I'm going to make sure to play this game next time I do one. And I still haven't gone to it. I, I kind of do want to play Animal Crossing because the idea seems weird to me, like why it's so popular. But I can understand like how it's addicting and like it's really popular. And right now everyone's like, Animal Crossing for the Switch, Animal Crossing for the Switch, which they did for the Wii U too. But something I want to try. Um, to my knowledge, this is kind of like like those time-based games, I think, where like you do something and you come back after a certain amount of time and you can continue with it, I think. As I said, I never played this game before and I actually never played an Animal Crossing game before. But um, if it's like, let me know in the comment section if you get, if you play this, is it kind of, or either of these, is it kind of like The Simpsons Tapped Out or Family Guy Quest for Stuff? Because I used to play Family Guy Quest for Stuff so much until... I guess I lost interest, and then I replayed it recently, and I lost my save file, so I'm in the beginning, and I got tired of it. Next, we have Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures. This game is pretty much just a Pac-Man platformer um, with the different abilities, and you have to beat the ghosts and get the balls. It's not the best game, but it's entertaining. Next, we have SpongeBob SquarePants Plant. Ugh, wow, SpongeBob SquarePants Plankton's Robotic Revenge. So I will pick this game up because I've heard so much good things about like old SpongeBob games, and I had SpongeBob and the Curse of the Flying Dutchman for the PS2, and I didn't remember it being the best game. And I hear so many good things about SpongeBob games that I wanted to pick up SpongeBob game and try one, but I went for the 3DS one because I had a 3DS and it was the most recent system and everything. This game's all right. I mean, it's really easy to beat. It takes like two hours, even if you to beat it, or even less. The controls are kind of a pain, but I mean, you get used to them. It's not exciting. It's not in depth. It's pretty much the same thing over and over again. But it's an okay game. Um, I did want to get SpongeBob Sponge out of the water, but it's not really easy to find now. I really don't want to pay extra money for a game like that because I heard it's not the best. And the final 3DS game that I have is Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate. So this game got me into the Castlevania series. Um, my friend who likes the Castlevania series as well let me borrow um, Lords of Shadow on the PS3, which I never really finished. I still haven't given back either. This game's really fun. When I got this game, I was addicted to it. I played so much of it, actually. I remember one time my friend was waiting for me to hang out with them all. And I'm like, I'll be right there. I'll be there soon. And um, I was sitting at home playing this game. I was just so addicted to them. And then I was like, oh, I got kind of lost track with this game. And they're like, wow, that game must be really good then. I'm like, it's all right. And then they watch gameplay of it. And they're like, this game sucks. And I'm like, no, it's really fun. I enjoyed it a lot. It got me in Castlevania. I do want to watch the Netflix series of Castlevania they have. And I do hope Castlevania still stands against future games. But with Konami being how they are, it might be the end of Castlevania. But um, I can always go back and play older ones. Okay, so that is all my 3DS games. 
So before I did this video, I actually did count how many games I have, and I got 65 3DS games, which is pretty hefty of a collection. Not the biggest, because there's people out there with bigger collections probably than me. But um, my goal is to get 100 3DS games at least. This is the biggest collection of games I've ever had, really. All my other systems I had, I might, especially older systems, I only had like three, four, five, six games, because as a kid, gaming wasn't something I could do all the time. It was more of a reward for me. So I didn't play games that often, so I didn't really need that many games. Just if it's a series I loved, I made sure to, I made sure to get the game for my like birthday or Christmas or something like that. But now that I'm older, I can actually get games. And um, it was allowed me to get the biggest 3DS collection that I've ever had um, of any game system. So anyway, let's just get to the consoles. I actually, at one point, did collect 3DS consoles as well. I haven't done it since. kind of want to go back, but I just can't justify it to myself to go back. We're going to go back with my first 3DS. We have the Pikachu XL. I remember when this first was announced, it was a, only announced in Japan. And I'm like, oh, please come to America. Please come to America. Like, I really want this. I really want this. Really want this. Europe got it. Come on, please come to America. As soon as we got this, I jumped on it. And this is my first 3DS I ever got. And I played a crap ton of this one as well. And um, what really got me to get a 3DS two things. One, this being announced, honestly, in North America, and then Pokemon X and Pokemon Y. When those games were announced, I'm like, it's time for me to get a 3DS. I was late to the DS, so the DS library that I still wanted to had to play, games I wanted to play, carried me over, but this got me into 3DS, and I'm so glad it did, because I am in love with the 3DS. Um, so yeah, that's my first 3DS. Put that right there. The next 3DS I'm going to show is just the Lime Green Amazon.com exclusive 3DS. Um, I only play these two 3DSs. The other ones are mostly just a collection. I have played some of them, but I reset them and put them back in the box. Um, this game, this 3DS is my favorite one, honestly, compared to the XL, just because it's more solid for me. The hinges on this one weren't the best, I guess. I don't know why, it's just how it was made. So like, I'd always have to hold it like with my index fingers up on the top screen. This one I can actually hold regularly and play. It has a C-stick, it's, I don't know, it's more comfortable in my hands as well. So these two, as I said, are my two played 3DSs. We have the box for the lime green one. Next we have the new, I'm running out of space, honestly. Let's see if I can make more space real quick. I know this video is really long. There we go. Next, we have the new 3DS Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green versions. I got this because it's the 20th anniversary of Pokemon, and I love Pokemon, and I just wanted to get this for like nostalgic reasons. Next, we have the Xernia, Xerneas Pokemon 3DS XL for X and Y. I only have this one. I never got the um, um, Evol... Uh, can't even say the name of it. One. But... um. It's shiny and blue. Next, we have the Mario and Luigi Dream Team Edition. It's for the Yuri Luigi, and it's not that bad of a design. It's cool. It's just Mario and Luigi on it and silver, but it's still a cool 3DS system. Let's get this one for later. Next, we have the Legend of Zelda one with the nice golden Triforce on it and everything. We also have the Lime Green Yoshi Edition, which I like this one as well, but I don't know. I feel like the Lime Green one, the new 3DS Lime Green one is, is better because like this one, it's green and I like green. Green's one of my favorite colors, but um, the white kind of puts it out, puts it out and the Yoshi picture kind of puts it out there as well. But it's still a good 3DS for Yoshi fans. All right. And finally, we have the Retro NES Edition 3DS XL. This one is pretty cool. I mean, it's retro, it's a 3DS, and the biggest thing I love about it is the box actually kind of looks like, hold it at the right angle, here we go, an NES. Like, you have the wire here, you have, like, the input and output right there, which from this angle actually looks a little real. Um, it's a really cool design. And Retro right now is, like, huge, and I've seen people actually out there with hats of this, and it's a really big thing, retro, and... 
the Europe, I think, has an SNES edition, new 3DS that they're getting, and I really wish it would come to the stage because I would pick that one up. I think it looks cool as well. I really do miss getting consoles, collecting the consoles, but as I said, I just can't justify it. And I'm older now, so the money-wise isn't as it was when I collected all these a few years ago. But um, anyway, overall, this is... Oh, one more thing. I have an empty box of The Legend of Zelda um, edition as well, because when I got this one shipped to me, the box wasn't in the best condition. At least I didn't think so. So I ended up, my friend gave me their box, <laughs> so which is Prestige. So I had that as well. But anyway, that is it for my 2017... 3ds collection if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you're new to this channel hit that subscribe button i do gaming reviews i have th collection videos 3ds and other systems i'll talk about things that are out there i do a whole bunch of stuff on this channel and stays up to date if you subscribe you'll stay up to date with this channel you'll know my new videos are up and it helps support this channel as well as well as a thumbs up leave a comment down below in the comment section let me know what your favorite 3ds game is or if you have any suggestions on any of these games or anything i said i didn't play um, just let me know what's up down there, and I think that is it. Next year, I'm going to try to do the same video, if I if I even have new 3DS games by then, which I probably will. I'm going to try to do the same video on the same date, make a little tradition. I wanted to do a 3DS month this month, but unfortunately I couldn't get, there to get it done in time. Maybe next year. Anyway, I'm talking too long. This video is like double the size of the last year's, but I do have more games. But anyway, I will talk to you all later. Thanks for watching. I love you all.